All right, welcome back to the shop. So this video I'm gonna do is about removing these tires with the run flats and just putting regular tires on without the run flats in them. Um, I did one growler where the run flats were already, already gone. We changed the tires and it was pretty simple. It was actually really easy. Just unbolt the flange right here and then just pretty much just, you know, work the tire a little bit and get it off. But these ones with the run flats, it's got this thick heavy piece of crap in here and it grabs on the side of the rim here really bad we tried getting this tire off of the rim without using the press or anything we tried beating it we tried prying it we tried using the outrigger on my truck to uh you know setting the, setting the rim up on a block and using my outrigger to push down we've got just a little bit of movement so what i did is i i I was looking for a piece of pipe or something to make a fixture with to be able to use my press to push these off. And what I ended up doing, I ended up going to this uh, tire place over here in Lake Elsinore and I got this old truck rim and it's just the right diameter. The tire fits right on here and I could just push the rim right down into here and there's plenty of room in here for the rim to, to set down in without hurting it. And uh, that, I'm going to do a little quick video here today on how to do that. And then I'll also uh, mount one of the tires so you can see. Um, you know what it takes to mount them it's real simple uh one thing that's nice about getting rid of these run flats these things are really heavy so here's a wheel stock wheel with the run flats in it let me start up my scale here okay so this is this is an aluminum rim with a regular you know pretty much regular tire on it with the run flat in it and it's 98 pounds And then here, I just kind of stacked everything up, but there's the rim, the tire, brand new tire, and the lock ring, 73 pounds. So that run flat weighs 25 pounds. So shedding 25 pounds off the tire, that's quite a bit. That's 25% of the weight. Um, you know, to put these in, they have a special machine that kind of folds them, kind of like a taco kind of a thing, and then it pops them in there. I'm sure they'd be easy enough to get out. I could just put the outrigger on my, for my crane here um, and hook my crane on here and pull it up. I also heard of a guy using a, an engine hoist and he just hooked that onto the, I don't know, somebody hooked the, the tire part on his engine hoist and then hooked up to the uh, run flat and then just cranked up the engine hoist to pull it out. That's all great if you just want to get them out and reuse the tire. But if you want to put them back in and use them in a new tire, you're going to need a special, a special tooling to do it. Um, that thing is thick and it's, it's uh, not, not going to be very easy to do. All right, to get these apart, you just want to take the whole wheel off the vehicle. Obviously, you're going to lose the air when you take it off, unless for some reason your CTI system's not hooked up. And um, so make sure there's no air in it. Make sure you have it open. If you don't have the CTI system hooked up and you just have a valve stem, take the valve core out. Make sure it's completely empty. You don't want to unbolt this ring with, with this thing's under pressure um, or you will lose your head. So just pull all these bolts out. All right, now once you get all those nuts off, um, these ones here were a pain in the butt. This rim has been painted twice, and I had to pry the socket off every one. You can see all this. In fact, if anybody knows why some of the wheels are painted black versus the uh, Kark 3 d 3 green, uh, leave something in the, a message in the comments about that. Um, so anyways, once you get all the nuts off, you gotta pry this off. Sometimes they just pop off, sometimes they take a little bit of work. I'm a little winded because I had to use these two screwdrivers uh, just to get in here and pop this off. It wasn't too bad. I've definitely had worse. So we take the ring off, take the O-ring. This one's a little married in there a little bit. So I wasn't able to find the, the O-ring online. Um, I found, you know, the company that makes the wheels, I found, you know, O-rings that they make, that they use on a, I think it's a Land Rover that has a, a bead lock like this, uh, but I couldn't verify the size. So what I did is I bought, um, actually the first set that I did, they had brand new O-rings in it. And I, so they were still round, they weren't flat here. So I, I mic'd them and I just ordered O-ring material from uh, McMaster Car. And I've got a jig here where, you, where I slice it and use uh, a super glue to glue the O-ring together. And you, you're basically just making the correct size O-ring that way out of, out of O-ring stock. Uh, small O-rings are molded. Uh, bigger ones like this, they're not molded. They're, they just cut them to size and they glue them together. That's, that's how they're all made. So now that I got the, that stuff apart, I can take and put this in the press and I will set the camera up and I'll see if I can get a good camera angle here and press this, this wheel off.
All right, so I got the tire centered on this old rim. And then you can see I have the end up here, the end of the studs up here. Put a spacer right here for my press. And if I can control for it. Press just ran out of strokes. So I'm mostly, I'm most of the way out. It comes back up. I'll put a different spacer in here. Okay, so I added a spacer. I can keep pressing. go and so it's hung, hanging up a little bit right here I did that last time actually in the exact same spot uh, but that's not a big deal I can pop that part off and there we go yeah so here here's the run flat inside there um, some of you guys that have vibration issues um, you know, when you get on the highway and stuff, I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't this run flat. I'm going to take the ones out of my growler. Just, I don't need them. I don't plan on getting my tires shot out. And I carry a spare. So, I plan on taking them out just so the thing rides better. So, I'm sure it's going to ride way better without this solid chunk of rubber in here. Alright, so the tires that I'm going to put on, these were supplied by the customer. Uh, I know someone else who used a set of these. And so, I kind of referred them to these tires. It's a, it's a Thunder Ranger all-terrain size is a 235 8516 one thing you want to do is uh you have the yellow dot on here so if you put this next to your valve stem on a normal wheel that gets you really close to being balanced um but if you have a ford uh this red dot lines up with a with a not all of them have it but a lot of ford rims will have a, a little notch ground in it right on the bead on the rim you line it up with that. It's the heaviest part of the tire is opposite of this. So you put this near the valve stem and then it helps to balance it out. So if you're into mounting your own tires and balancing them, that'll save you a lot of money in balancing weights. So I am going to put that opposite of here just because this is probably the heaviest part of the wheel here with the lug on there for the c test system. So I'll put it opposite of that. So anyways, uh, get the, got the, the tire soap. Just put a decent amount of tire soap on the uh, beads of the tire. This couldn't be any easier, actually. We line it up so that the yellow thing's opposite of the heaviest part of the rim. Do this jump on it, get it into place. Um, the O-ring goes, I'm not using this O-ring, I'm just putting this on just to show you guys. The O-ring drops into the groove here on the outside just make sure it's in place and they're good and when I put the one on for a final assembly I'll glue it up really good with the tire soap and you line the bead up okay and then on the rim here you'll see you got four blank holes and then you'll see where there's the, the holes here too so you just want to line those up so I got the hole here in the rim hole here And then just push this down, start some of the nuts, peek in there again, make sure that your O-ring's in place, and then just, uh, you know, do use a crisscross pattern and just pull down a little bit at a time and work the thing all the way down until it's flat, then torque it down to the uh, specified torque, and then air it up, and that's it. All right, so I've got the tire on the rim, got the, the O-ring inside, and I've got the outside bead lock in place, but I just have just a few nuts on a hold in place. And so you take a look inside, I hope I get the camera in there. And you just get a splash. I just inspect to make sure the O-ring's still in its groove all the way around. So it looks good. And then what we'll do is just slowly pull it down with the impact.
All right, so I'll put the rest of the nuts on and then I'll put a cap on here and then I can just air it up here with my regular air chuck and seat the beads. All right, I couldn't find my cap plug that I usually put on here. I think it's a Dash 4 JIC, but I have this hose right here and that way I can just leave the Schrader valve closed. I'll just uh, pinch my air hose over like that, connect it, and then I can just let the air in as fast as I want it to. Let's see what happens. One thing you want to do, now they say whenever you air a new tire up, you always want it in a tire cage. As far as I know, those tire cages were for the old tires with the with the beadlock rings. They're not beadlock, but the you know like the lock ring in them, those suicide rings. And um, you know, because those things when they'd air them up, if that ring wasn't in perfectly, that lock ring, it would pop out. And guys have had their heads cut off. They've been literally cut in half with those things. This type of tire can't really come off. Um, I know in tire shops they don't bother to use it, but they still say to do that when you're airing tires. So use do this at your own risk. If you aren't sure how to do it, make sure that you uh, you know consult a professional on how to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and let the air in now. We'll seat the beads. One thing I will do, I stay away from it. I won't put my head over it. I won't put my arm over it. And I'm just going to let the air in. Pick it up. Make sure. Yeah. So the bottom's seated in. And the top's seated in too. So. I'll go ahead and let the air out, stop putting air in it now and let the air out and then it'll air up when it gets on the, on the vehicle. All right, and there we go. I've got all four tires mounted. They all took air nice. It looks good. The tires that run were just rotted. They were just starting to chunk out really bad. Uh, the tread was worn really unevenly, like really bad on, like on the insides versus the outside. So, this is desperately needing the tires. All right, so I hope this video helps somebody. Um, if it helped you out, please hit the like button. Even if it didn't, please hit the like button. It's really easy to do, it's free. Um, it helps me to know that I'm doing videos that, uh, you know, the content that you guys like. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Um, share the video with a friend. If you have anybody who's into off-roading or uh, into military vehicles, military collectibles, stuff like that, um, share my videos. Um, just help me to get some more subs going. And um, thanks for watching and have a good day.